Yes, so I was aware that Mr. Floyd had become unconscious while in police custody, that he had been transported to Hennepin Healthcare, and that that was where he was pronounced dead. I believe at the time I started the examination, my staff was probably still working to confirm Mr. Floyd's identity and uh, properly notify his next of kin. But that was basically the background information that I had. H had you seen any of the videos at the time you started your work? I had not. I was aware that at least one video had gone viral on the internet, but I intentionally chose not to look at that until I had examined Mr. Floyd. Um, I did not want to bias my exam by going in with any preconceived notions that might lead me down one pathway or another. So it was then several days after you'd done your work on the autopsy that you saw the video. The decedent's name and the decedent's case number. Uh, you can see the, the, the injuries that we illustrated in the previous two photos there on the left side of his head and on his left cheek. You can also see a small abrasion on the left side of his forehead. It's the, kind of that pinpoint thing about an inch above his left eyebrow. You can see a laceration, which is a, a tearing of the skin on the right side of his upper lip. Um, there's also some subtle bruising of his nose and a couple of small abrasions on the right side of his nose. And I think you can see a few small abrasions under the left corner of his mouth. His heart was enlarged by weight, but that wouldn't really be something you could capture in a photograph unless it were so excessively enlarged that, that it would be obvious from the, from the picture. And, and so, then the valve. So, so having done all of that with respect to Mr. Floyd, uh, did you find any previous damage to his heart muscle? No, Mr. Floyd had no visible or microscopic previous damage to his heart muscle. You know,